Today we're going to be fitting the Give Energy all-in-one battery storage system to enable our customer to harness the excess solar energy that they're generating from this brand new solar roof that we've put on, store that in the battery, power the house overnight from their battery and it enables whole home backup so that if they've got a power cut out here in the countryside which is fairly common occurrence their whole house can run off the battery storage system. So settle in, because we're gonna show you how we install this step by step. Let's go. So this is a battery, believe it or not. I know it looks like a suitcase, but it's actually a 3.3 kilowatt hour battery module. And this all-in-one battery system allows you to slot four of these into it. Now it comes with four, so it's a total of, I think, 13.5 kilowatt hours of battery storage, but they're so heavy that you'd never be able to get it on the wall if it was filled with these. So we've taken the battery modules out. We're marking up our nice, flat, smooth surface, fireproof, so that we can get it all laid out neatly. I've got my buddy Lee with me, helping me to get it done. So I've made this tasty little diagram of how we're gonna lay everything out. And the idea is just plan ahead makes for a neater install where you know where everything's going. And we've got this little wall template that is provided by Give Energy. And we've already pre-marked our fixing holes. So we make sure it's nice and level. That's all good and ready to go. Now, normally you might mount this on a brick wall or something. We like to put Hardy Backer on the wall. It's actually made like a backing board for tiles, but what it is is flame proof and stuff. So it just gives a nice smooth surface to mount things on and it's flame proof. We've actually put some OSB board behind this because we're in this weird, funky concrete garage that's not got any smooth surfaces. So we've got a nice solid base to fix to. Given as you do provide these wall anchors, which are really solid if you're fixing to brick or concrete wall or something. But in this case, we're gonna use wood screws with uh, washers nice thick wood screws to get a nice solid fixing. Now what we love at Artisan is products that are easy to install and kind of idiot proof. This is one example of that, left and right, so we know exactly where our brackets are going. We're gonna put this on the wall. We're just gonna use these screws with penny washers because we've got 25 mil wooden backing. Now this battery is heavy, so we wanna make sure that we've got really, really solid fixings, which we have. Now the whole thing is just gonna hook on here, so let's give it a go. Now I can hear the keyboard warriors saying, those flimsy little wood screws are not gonna hold it in. But actually, the, this has feet on it, so all the weight is gonna go on the feet. This is just like to stop the sheer force of it pulling away from the wall if someone tried to tug on it or anything. So those wood screws into a solid back board will be absolutely fine. And then this is actually probably best as two man lift, but it is doable with one person. It's not too heavy. Yeah, that's, that's solid. We'll check the level, isn't it? Yeah, it's up on this side, so. There we go, that's it. If you're having problems with leveling stuff up, really helps if you have a multitude of levels. So we've got this Chinese level provided by Give Energy in the pack. We've got this high quality Milwaukee level and we've got a Stabila level. But no, seriously, we're struggling a bit with leveling it up here because the, I think the garage floor is a little bit wonky and the, probably the walls are a little bit wonky as well because it's just a wonky old garage. And we're trying to get it front to back and side to side all properly leveled up. Right, time for some muscle. We're gonna put these in now that the casing is, is mounted on the wall. Slide these, they feel like the weight, of, the weight of gold bullion or something. They literally just slide in. There we go. That's it. Just something to note with this, this all comes packaged in a big wooden crate and it's like, it looks like you, they've delivered some kind of archeological find or something. It's, it's, you expect like a dinosaur skeleton to be inside of it, it's so well packaged. But the whole package weighs, I think, nearly 200 kilos. So it's definitely a two-man lift or probably more than two-man lift to get it off the van. If you've got a good wholesaler, they might actually deliver it with two people. Um, but then you basically got to unpackage it, take the battery cover off, take the battery modules out, then it's safe to lift put it into place, slide the battery modules back in, and now we're gonna stick this cover on. Uh, 
Fuzz is testing my muscles here. Okay, so we've got it centered with the battery. We've got it level roughly, just marking the bracket up. Then we can take this off. I've got a long level in the uh, fan, but just use a bit of wood. Why <laughs> use a long level when you've got a piece of wood? Jordan's just given the lads a hand up on the roof. Just mounted the bracket and got the Give Energy gateway up. Just need to get some retainer screws into the bracket so that can't be pulled off. If we open up this door here, it comes with this little key that goes in the side. And you can see, so this is what's on the inside. So you've got your feed from your grid comes in. You've got a bypass, which you can bypass all of this and get grid power back to your fuse board. Your load, which goes back to your fuse board. So in essence, we've taken the tails out from the meter to our fuse board, rerun them from a switched fuse to here, and then we'll run an armored back from here, back to the fuse board. You've got a space for a breaker for a car charger, and then you've got your solar inverter, and then we've got our all-in-one battery here. So Lee's gonna cut us a length of trunking here, which means that we can terminate all our cables neatly into the trunking. We're gonna put our AC isolators and generation meter on top of the trunking, which is a nice way to hide all the cables and make it look really nice and neat and close everything. We've got an AC isolator here for the battery, so that's gonna go on this side, and then we'll come out with some flexible conduit into the side with the wiring for the battery. And then on this side, we're gonna put an AC isolator for the solar and a generation meter so that everything's safe and it's going through there because our solar circuit, which the inverter is up in the loft, solar connects directly to this. That means that we don't need any CTs or anything additionally for the solar. This will read how much power the solar is generating because the circuit breaker of the solar is actually in here. So it's slightly different to some systems that use CTs for measuring. In this case, all your circuits go through the backup gateway, all your generation circuits, etc. And also you can put an EV circuit in here as well if you want to. Isolators are all on the wall now, generation meters up as well. So the next step is we need to get a bit of copex from this side down and round to feed the all-in-one battery. We're gonna stick a bit of metal tray down and across to where our duct is. That's obviously then leading a path to gland up to here. And then it's just a case of getting all the wiring done really. The tray's all on the wall now. So I've made a nine in just out of one piece. Got it on, uh, we just spaced it off with a few washers just to get the cable ties behind. And basically you're just gonna start cable tying the cables round. I won't tie all the way up because it's nice to have a bit of slack for when you make your glands off and you wanna sort of pull the cable back and get it through the gland. So far we've got the data cable from the customer's router into the trunk in. So we'll leave that for tomorrow and that's gonna go into the gateway. We've got the EV Ultra that we've used. That's going up to the inverter in the loft. That's all stripped and ready. So we'll leave that in there as well. So now we've just got the two armoured. So one's coming from the switch fuse in the meter cupboard um, below the fuse board. So that will come through into the grid connection here. And then the other armoured comes out of the load and goes back to the consumer unit. So we've literally just got to bring them through, get a couple of glands in here, get it all stripped, and then we'll see how far we get today. Whatever's left tomorrow, we'll just second fix. Hopefully we should be able to get the majority of this buttoned up today. Might be a little bit of snagging to come back tomorrow morning. Um, looped with me, we've just finished the solar skirt up on the roof. So I'm gonna start getting this all prepped to go into the gateway. Me and Ruben did mark these two armoureds as one and two, but you know how it is when things can get mixed up. I just wanna double check and confirm that is the case before I connect anything wrong into the gateway. So I've got Luke in the house on the other end touching the two cables together. So I'm just gonna do a quick continuity test. So you can hear Luke's touching that and he's taking it apart. 
There you go. So we know that that's the right one. That goes to the consumer unit, which I've wrote inside the trunk in just for ease of anyone in the future and save me pulling tape on and off. So this can get connected into the load of the gateway. This is the one that comes out of the switched fuse inside. So that will supply the whole gateway. And then we've got obviously the isolators to second fix, but at least we know we're going with the right cables. So anyone that's fairly normal uses grey as neutral, black as earth. I know it doesn't matter as long as you sleeve it, but definitely bugs me. I don't know if it bugs any of you when you see the uh, grey as earth and the black as neutral. All right, so tool of the day is gonna be this 230 volt heat gun. Was using the battery one yesterday, but it's so cold it was taking ages. This one's got two speeds. It's just cheap and cheerful one, but does a job so much quicker than the battery one, and you know it's not gonna run out. <sighs> Pretty cold. Oh. I've done that, yeah. Oh, I'm on holiday. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. I'm in a freezing cold. Just getting the cables into the gateway now. If you take these stuffing glands off, you've actually got these solid rubber bungs um, in them, so you have to just take the whole bottom off, pull that out. Might be worth keeping them to one side or just um, get rid of them if you don't need them. That's our LAN cable going to the router. We've got our grid connection coming in here our load back to the consumer unit, and then we'll have our cable, which goes up to the inverter. We've also got an earth rod to bring into here because it's not already a TT, so you're gonna need that. What I'm doing here is, this is the AC isolator. So this comes from the loft. We've got an AC isolator up in the loft as well, um, but it gives you two points of isolation, obviously. So what I'm doing is here, this is the cable I'm bringing in. Um, coming straight into the meter, then down into the isolator and then from here it will feed over to Lee where he's working the gateway. This is a second fixed a little bit more now, so you can see we've got our armoureds coming up, they've got a fly lead coming into here. Luke's second fixed all the generation meter and the isolator. I've done the one on this side for the all-in-one battery. That's a spare space for if you've got a car charger, you'd put another breaker in there. This one's doing the inverter, so that's our solar. And then the one on the end is feeding our all-in-one battery. And it does look like at the back, there's an all-in-one parallel termination there. So I wonder if you can have multiple all-in-one batteries and just have them all linked off each other. But if you know, put it down in the comments. If not, I'll uh, have to do a bit of research online, but not too bad. I'd say it could be sort of altered a bit to make it a bit more user friendly, but yeah, get there. So we are putting the finishing touches on this battery storage install now before we start the commissioning process. And one of the finishing touches is connecting this earth electrode to the backup gateway. Now, the reason we need an earth electrode um, or basically a backup earth is because when the backup gateway switches over in the event of a power cut, it's gonna cut off completely the supply to the grid. And potentially there could be you know, loss of supply in the grid because the earth has cut out or if we have what's called a pen conductor, protective earth neutral conductor, which is where the earth and the neutral are combined uh, at some point from the, the supplier, then they could have had a loss of, of pen conductor and we would lose our earth to the property, but there would still be power because we're running the whole property off the battery. So essentially, to put it really simply for you guys, when you're doing whole house backup or even partial backup from battery storage, you always need to have an earth electrode. And that's what we're doing now. You can do it with an earth rod or you can do it with a disc or a mat or all sorts of different options. Standard most installs do an earth rod. It's quite easy, you just drive it down into the ground, put it in a little pit. It's like a 1.2 meter long copper rod. But in this case, we've used what's called a conduit disc. It's basically like a disc that goes in the ground and it gives you a really good, really low earth reading. Whereas with a rod, it's a lot harder to achieve the kind of low readings that we aim for. So we tend to fit conduit discs as standard now. It is a bit more expensive, but it saves time faffing around in the long run, trying to get an earth rod deeper and deeper to get the right, uh, the right reading. And also banging 
a massive earth rod into ground can be a bit dangerous if there are underground services, pipes, cables, etc. A conduit disc is a safer way of doing it. What I'm doing now is I'm um, just bringing this through. This is from Jordan on the other side. And this is the main earth that goes to the conduit disc, which Jordan's, well, he's already put in the ground. Jordan's just run the cable for it. Basically, yeah, we've just got a bit of copex here. Come through from the wall, bring it into the trunk on the top here. Then what we'll do is just bring it round bring it through one of these glands and then that will just go onto the main earth over there. So one of the little finishing touches is to get the document holder and the schematic drawing mounted up. The schematic drawing is a requirement for MCS and it's just a really good thing to have. It shows the layout of everything and how many panels are on the roof, what size panels, etc. So every solar system should have somewhere a schematic. We put the schematic in a nice little clip frame holder like that, just nice and neat. I'm going to fix it up inside here so that it's easily and clearly visible when you come into the consumer unit. And then we put a document holder in as well where all the MCS pack will go and the customer can keep any documentation related to their system in there. So it's all nice and neatly uh, concealed inside the cupboard and readily accessible for any electricians who come to visit later. So this is the moment of truth. Lee's in the mains cupboard, doing the changeover so that we get the power on into here from that switch fuse. Um, let me talk you through a little bit of the features of this system. Obviously we've added some stickers and things like that, just getting everything nice and neatly labeled up. But the way that the whole backup thing works is very, very clever. So the main power feed comes in here. Then you've got this little bus bar system here that goes across to a bypass switch so that if you want to bypass this backup gateway completely you can just turn on the back bypass switch and it'll mean the power's permanently on without uh, any issues so that's what we're going to do overnight probably because i don't think we're going to get it all commissioned yet today the sun is starting to go down and we're running out of time then we've got the 80 amp feed which goes back to the house to the house consumer unit then we've got our 32 amp circuit breaker for the all-in-one and a 32 amp circuit breaker for the give energy inverter for the solar. So everything kind of feeds through this, but what it does, which is really clever, is it's got an automatic changeover switch in it or an ATS. And basically when there's a loss, when it detects loss of power, it changes over, it cuts off the supply from the grid. It pins down to our earth rods so that we've got a good earth. It's still got its own surge protection device and stuff in here, so it's got all the safety features that it needs. But because the inverter is still connected to this um, board here, rather than the house board, the inverter won't shut down, which means that you're still generating solar even during a grid outage. But because that changeover switch has disconnected us completely physically from the grid with galvanic isolation, it means that there's no danger of power flowing back to the grid from the battery or the solar inverter. Now that's really important because imagine that the outage from the grid is on purpose. Maybe there's a, a bit of maintenance going on in the cables in the street or on the power lines. What we wouldn't want to do is to switch over to our battery and feed power back into the grid and give an electric shock to that guy who's working on the line outside. So that's why that galvanic isolation is so important and that automatic changeover switch to separate the backup system from the grid completely and avoid any back feeding. But then when the grid connection resumes and this system detects that, it will automatically change back, connect us back to the grid, and all of that is done almost instantaneously to the point where you won't even see the flicker of a light bulb. Now in terms of communications, this Give Energy gateway needs to communicate with the battery because it has to tell the battery when to charge and when to discharge. And it does that via a data cable, just like a normal Cat6 data cable, which we've made up ourselves. We put an RJ45 plug on each end and that just plugs in and that's gone through this flexible conduit along with the power cables. Then the inverter in the loft doesn't actually need communications because it's basically just a dumb inverter other than an internet connection so that it can get its firmware updates. All the gateway does is it reads via a, a CT in here how much the solar is producing. And so all of that data about how much solar we're generating is coming through the gateway rather than from the inverter. Well, here we are, moment of truth commissioning time. This is the bit that every electrician hates because it's one of those things that you just never know how it's going to go. It could take five minutes or it could take five days. Well that is it. The system is all up and running and commissioned and we just tested the backup power and it worked amazingly. So moment of truth. This is when we test the backup. 
So we're going to turn the main isolator for the whole property off and see what happens. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> that literally flickered for like a second, about a millisecond and then went, wow. A few little stats about this system. It is a 13 and a half kilowatt hour system as we probably mentioned earlier, but the interesting thing about it is it's got 100% depth of discharge. So we were kind of like looking into it and it seems like basically they actually have, it, the capacity of the battery is actually more than that. But rather than advertising it as more than that, they only advertise it as the, the amount that you can actually use, which is quite cool and it's a little bit different to some brands of battery storage system. All wired up, backup power, solar is generating. It's already generated 1.3 kilowatt hours today, which considering we only turned it on an hour or so before sunset, is pretty good. And the team have absolutely smashed it this week. Um, we've enjoyed the install. One happy customer, plenty more to look forward to. So if you are a potential customer who would like a system like this, there's a link below where you can um, get, give us all your information and we can get you a quote. Uh, if you're an installer who's thinking about installing these, I would say recommended, definitely get on board as an installer. We're certainly going to be recommending these more and more because they're actually fairly easy to install. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.